Yo, my name is Ryan Fila and I just landed in Peru. So I'm gonna make a video of all the stuff that I wish I knew when I landed last night. Just as a reference, today is May 2nd, 2021. And today is May 6th, 2021, where I update you on a couple things that I didn't know right here. So if you're watching this video a long time after that, please make sure that you go check out online what the current restrictions are because these things change so quickly. Point number one, if you're traveling to Peru, you must have a face shield. You must, of course, also have a mask. It's not a recommendation anymore. It's a requirement to get on the flight from Florida to Peru. Even though I stopped in Panama in between, I had to have one of these with me or they wouldn't give me my boarding passes. So I was lucky enough that there was a lady at the airport who saw the gap that nobody was selling them. She just had some behind the counter and was selling these for $10 a piece. And they're pretty stylish anyways. My favorite way to wear it is, is the backward upside down visor because this is still swag. I don't care what you say, 2002 is still in. Point number two, you have to have a negative COVID test within 72 hours of boarding your flight. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that is technically before your first flight. If you have layovers, that's what I would assume, but it may be 72 hours before you board your last flight, that flight right before you land in Peru. So what I would recommend doing is getting it as late as possible, but not to the point where you're risking not getting the results back before you get on the plane on your way to Peru. And it does have to be a PCR test as well. I've been using CVS and Walgreens. I just looked the other day at Walgreens' labs and how quickly their turnaround times are. And they're between six hours and uh, there, was, there was two of them. One was around six hours to a day. The other was one to two days. In my experience in the last couple of months, if you get it at Walgreens or CVS, your results will be back to you within about 36 hours. Do be aware though, to do Walgreens and CVS, you must be in a vehicle. They will not take you as a walk up. I've tried multiple times. It's time to go get yet another COVID test and let's see if I end up in the back of a lift again. Let's wash my hair a little bit so I look a little less homeless. Not much better. Hope I gave it another go. Looks like I gotta find a vehicle. <laughs> this AAA truck is gonna take me through. <laughs> Appointment at 11.15 for Ryan Fila. She didn't expect I'd be back in a AAA truck. My God, thank you. Have you ever seen it happen? No, that's, that's uh, hey, all the way to your brain? No, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he said, Will you pass this in there, James Bond? Is that everything? Yes. Okay, thank you. Roll out. All right, senor. Yep. Thanks, boss. <laughs> that AAA truck driver needs a raise. He saved me and bailed me out of getting another lift, which in LA would have cost me $10 to literally go through the drive-through. I wasn't paying that again. Also, I'll drop the links to both Walgreens and CVS down below. You can test for free at all these locations if you're uninsured or underinsured. Like your boy. Point number three is Peru has this form that you have to fill out. I'll also drop that link down below, but you have to fill it out on the day of travel. You can't do it before then. I tried multiple times, but you have to get it done on the day that you are traveling. And you'll need this form to get on your first flight to leave wherever you're leaving from the US. And you'll need it when you land in Peru. So make sure you download it, take screenshots, do all the things. Matter of fact, while I'm here, screenshot everything. Screenshot your COVID test. Make sure you have the full results that show it's a PCR test and the date and time with your name on it, all that information they'll need. Make sure you screenshot that other form. Make sure you screenshot anything that you think you might need. I keep screenshots of my credit card, my debit card, my ID, my passport, all saved in a safe place. So I always have those things available if something crazy happens. Number four is a general when you land, there's stuff that you're supposed to declare when you go to Peru. Anything over $500 of personal uh, use or personal wealth or gifts. Uh, drones, both of those you'll pay a 12% tax on. Anything over $500 that is for your personal stuff. And then drone you'll pay 12% straight up. And if you're carrying more than $10,000 worth of cash with you, you're supposed to declare that as well. Now, 
This isn't as a general rule, but I brought this in. This is worth over a thousand dollars. The camera that I'm currently filming on. All of this camera gear, my iPad, and lastly, a drone. I did take the propellers off it so it looked a little less droney, but that, that's what I did. Now you can tell me that's wrong in the comments if you think, I really don't care. That's what I'm gonna do because in most of the forums that I read for the customs portion of Peru is that it's kind of a gamble. They might say something, they might not. I got through with all of that stuff and nobody said a single word. And from what I understand the process, the way it typically works is that you declare it when you get into Peru and then when you leave, you just, at least for the drone, you show them that you have it and that you're taking it with you and they process it and they give you that money back, that 12% tax that you paid back. But I just don't wanna deal with that if I don't have to. Now I will say there is technically a penalty if they catch you smuggling it in, but if you just tell them, hey, I can declare it, they'll probably let you do that as well. But you are doing that at your own risk. Let me make that clear. You are doing that fully at your own risk. The two other quick points under when you land are, one, once you get to the Peru airport, it blows my mind, but there was like 25% of the people actually wearing this thing after they got through the checkpoint where they said, do you have this? And then people just went like this. And I was like, what's, what's the point? It's just for show. And Spanish will go a long ways once you get here. So even if you know a few statements, acerca de aeropuerto, más ahí, más aquí. ¿Cuánto tiempo de Miraflores? Or you know how to say, I don't speak Spanish or I speak very little Spanish, that will help you a ton. I was lucky enough that my lady at Customs spoke a bit of English, so we played like the dance where we go back and forth with our broken languages, but Spanish will help you a ton in Peru. Now tip number five is for after you leave the airport. Right now, Peru is pressing hard down on the COVID situation because I don't think they took care more at the beginning, so they're kind of feeling the backlash now. You must wear a mask everywhere you go, indoor, outdoor. Uh, there are police out in the streets writing fines for this. Two, when you get to bigger stores and shopping centers, you have to have your guard to get in at all. So you have to bring that around if you wanna to go to bigger stores. But indoor dining is definitely restricted. I would assume down to about 50 to 70%. Some restaurants don't let you come in. It's takeout only. It seems to be a little bit on business discretion. The beaches are certainly locked down. I walked by there the other day and police are covering the beaches. You can't go to the beach unless you're a surfer, it seemed like. There were surfers out there, but nobody on the beach. And from what I see going around the city, it seems like most tourist items are closed down. I didn't see anybody paragliding or parasailing on the coast or things like that. So if you're planning on traveling to Lima, Peru for a touristy type of stuff, you might wanna wait a little while. They have a curfew in place that's from 9 p.m. at night to 4 a.m. in the morning every day of the week. And then on Sundays, I just found this out as I was just about to leave to go get a converter for my plug-in, is that Sundays are completely locked down. On Sundays, you cannot drive your personal vehicles out on the streets. It can only be like taxis or service vehicles or public transit. You can walk outside in some of the businesses are open, especially restaurants for Rappi, which is like their Uber Eats service. They're slammed on Sunday, so businesses and restaurants are still open, but it's pretty quiet in the city. Now lastly, I completely butchered this one the first time I did it because I was unaware, so I'm going to completely re-record all of it. It's about your COVID testing. So you do have to get this, the COVID test within 72 hours of getting on the plane. But once you get to Peru, you also have to get another COVID test. It can be an antigen or rapid test that you can get, but it has to be in Peru. And you need that to avoid the 14 day quarantine that is still in place for international travelers. So if you get your negative test at home, get on the plane, come to Peru, and you don't get that second test, technically you're supposed to be on a 14 day quarantine period. But if you get the antigen or the rapid test when you land here, you can get out of that 14 day quarantine, obviously assuming that you test negative. Now I do have a link down in the description that points you in the direction of a testing facility that does both PCR and antigen tests 
when you get here to Lima, Peru. So use that if it helps you out. It took me a while to find, honestly. So that might be the most beneficial resource in the description. And these are the rules currently for tourists coming from the US in specific. If you're coming from another country, a lot of these will apply to you, but make sure you look up specifically what you need from your country. Like I know right now, until May 15th, you cannot fly from Brazil, South Africa, uh, in the UK, I believe. There, there might be another country, the UK might not be 100% accurate, but there are some countries that are on no-go. And they might extend it again. There's some other countries on that list as well. I don't have all of the information, but I just wanted to put some information out there so you know, especially if you're coming from the US. Yesterday was my first day in Peru. I just flew in last night. So the next three months, I'm anticipating that I'll be in Peru this first month for sure. We'll be in Lima. We'll see how the COVID restrictions and things play out, whether I move and go somewhere else or whether I stay near the city, but expect a ton of Peru content also mixed with all the stuff from before from Kenya because I'm finally pumping all of that stuff out and getting my workflow nailed down but if you're new here again I'm Ryan Fila I appreciate you being here if you got some value out of this video I'll put a couple other videos up right here that I think you might also enjoy and until next time try to live your dream and I'll see you there peace